does the U.S. Army name helicopters? Now, if you ever watched that movie Black Hawk Down, the uncredited star of that movie was the authentic, honest-to-God Black Hawk helicopters flown by, honest-to-goodness, 160th Special Operation Regiment pilots. And if you're one of the 12 people who've ever seen that Nicolas Cage straight-to-video masterpiece Firebirds, that movie featured the AH-64 Apache. But why are they called Apaches, or Blackhawks, or Lakotas, or Chinooks? Why do these names have a Native American origin, and usually one to two letters and some numbers after it? Well, I'm going to get into that, but, uh, you know, if you notice, I've lost a little bit of weight, and that's because of Lumen. I'm at Father's Day brunch with my dad. The question here is, should I eat the chicken and biscuits, or should I eat the steak and eggs? And I can find out with Lumen. Let me show you. So here's how the Lumen works. I'm going to suck in for four seconds, I wait ten seconds, and I blow out. Inhale deeply through your lumen. Hold your breath. Exhale in three, two, one. So right now my lumen is analyzing my breath and it says my glycogen stores are low. I'm at a two. So what this means is essentially I can afford the carbohydrates, so if I want to get chicken and biscuits, I can. Breathe into Lumen when you wake up, before you work out, and before you eat, and you'll know what's going on inside your body. Look, it's not a magic bullet. You still got to put in the work, but I've lost 10 pounds using Lumen. Take the next step to a healthier version of you. Click the link in the description below. Go to lumen.me slash Macbeth or hit the QR code to get 10% off your Lumen. Let's get back to the video. So to standardize the identification of military aerospace vehicles, in 1962, the United States Department of Defense implemented the Mission Design Series, or MDS. This was known as the Tri-Service Designation System, which unified the Air Force, Navy, and Army nomenclatures. It classified the way you designate names based on things like operational status, type of mission, what type of vehicle and design series it was. All right, let's take the Black Hawk as an example here. Black Hawk is designated as UH-60. Its base model is broken down as such. U stands for utility. It's the multi-mission capable designation, uh, as opposed to another role which would just be for scouting or attack or whatever. The H in UH is for helicopter, right? No, we're not trying to make this hard here. And then there is the design number, which is 60. Prefixes can be added, which designate the status, whether it's prototype, experimental, whatever. Even just changing the first letter of the primary prefix will designate the role it will have. UH-60 can also be classified as MH-60 when it's used for special operations, or SH-60, which is the naval variant that's used for submarine warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and other maritime missions. Then there's others like CH, or cargo helicopter, like the CH-47 Chinook, or OH for observation, like the OH-6 Cayuse, which everyone calls the little bird or the loach. If a helicopter is primarily designed for medical evacuation, it gets the prefix HH. And a full list of these prefixes is at ryanmcbeth.substack.com for free if you want to watch them. Now that we have the prefixes straight, let's talk about suffixes. The design or iteration is designated by a suffix, like A or B or L or M. And it can further distinguish the genuine purpose and functionality of an aircraft and what potential upgrades or modifications have been made. For example, H-64 Apache. The original model was called the A model. Then there was the B model, which was proposed after Operation Desert Storm, but kind of canceled. Then the C model, which really would have been the A or the newer engine, simultaneously developed with the D model, which had like a mast-mounted radar and glass cockpit. And finally, today's version is the E model, which can control drones and perform naval strike. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, all right, this is well and good, but how did the Apache get its name? Right, that's why you're here. All right, the theme of naming helicopters after Native American tribes or figures started back in 1947 when Army General Hamilton House was assigned to Army Aviation. He was tasked with developing doctrine and structuring 
how an aircraft would support efforts on the ground. After hating the first two helicopters, which is the Hoverfly and the Dragonfly, he developed instructions for naming helicopters after their abilities. An example would be the well-known H-13 from MASH. You know, the bulbous little helicopter from MASH. Its official name would be the Sioux in honor of Native Americans who fought in the Sioux Wars and defeated the 7th Cavalry Regiment at the Battle of Little Bighorn. And it is believed that this effort ultimately led to what would become Army Regulation 7028 in 1969. The regulation outlined the criteria on how to name major pieces of equipment. Now, names had to appeal to the imagination without sacrificing dignity, suggest an aggressive spirit and confidence in the item's capability, reflect the item's characteristic, including mobility, agility, flexibility, firepower, endurance, be based on tactical application, not source or method of manufacture, and be associated with the preceding qualities and criteria if a person's name is proposed. Now, according to AR-70-28, Army aircraft were categorized as specifically requiring Indian names and names of American Indian tribes and chiefs. To assist, an approved list of names was approved and provided by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Other categories for naming things like tanks, uh, they were usually named after American generals, such as William Tecumseh Sherman. Infantry weapons were supposed to be named after early American pioneers like Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. And assault weapons would be named after fearsome reptiles or insect names like Cobra or Scorpion. Although, honestly, Davy Crockett, the portable nuclear weapon, is probably the only name anyone can remember from that era. Eventually, AR-70-28 was rescinded. And the policies it replaced did not really mention these specific criteria, yet the tradition of naming helicopters after Native American tribes has continued. In 2012, the U.S. Army named its current primary training helicopter slash light utility helicopter, the UH-6072A Lakota, after the Lakota people and the Great Sioux Nation in the North and South Dakota. And throughout their history, the Army has been criticized for the practice of naming aircraft after these indigenous cultures. It has been said that using Native American names for equipment is a form of cultural appropriation. Some say that's an honor, others find it offensive, especially with the history of conflict between Native Americans and the U.S. military. There's others that state names and association do not accurately represent the tribe's identities or values. Uh, some tribes have expressed disapproval at naming U.S. military technology after their culture, especially with items like uh, attack helicopters such as the Cobra. The counter-argument here states that it's an honor and a sign of respect to honor the tribe's bravery and resilience. And it also acknowledges the history of Native Americans fighting alongside the U.S. military, with some tribes even blessing aircraft, seeing it as a positive symbol or recognition. And hey, you know, if you're into choppers, uh, I got three of them on my shirt available at Bunker Branding. Rock out with your chalk out. I wish I could have worn it for this video, but I could not find it. I think I left it at this girl's house in Virginia Beach. I'm going to have to go get it. And, uh, you know, here at Bunker Branding, you also can get grab one of my Captain Moroni Squadron shirts. I also have signed copies of The Last Republic available. Uh, this is also available at Amazon.com. Uh, this actually features quite a few helicopters in it when a gun raid is performed into the nation of Deseret which is this Mormon nation that kind of exists inside of the U.S. and has since 1847. All right, grab my novels, BunkerBranding.com, or get them on Amazon. Uh, I should have some copies on Audible for Marines and no Marine Corps. I cannot sign your audiobook. And thank you guys so much for watching. In a world where fashion meets firepower, where style becomes strategy, it's time to gear up for the ultimate mission with Bunker Branding. Introducing the Rock Out With Your Chalk Out t-shirt, a tribute to the fearless air cavalry. Feel the adrenaline rush as you don the pride of the skies. For those of you who dare from the air, precision and power unite when you think outside the bomb. And don't miss our Live Laugh Launch t-shirts for Patriot and Highmars, because sometimes defending freedom means bringing the thunder. 
Finally, for the true defender of the seas, we present Department of the Boat People. Sail of honor and show your allegiance to the world's mightiest maritime force. With these shirts, hoodies, and stickers, along with the tow missile, landmines, and drone warfare. These aren't just shirts, they're statements. They're your way of saying I stand for strength, unity, and style. Get yours at Bunker Branding today.